So let's talk about three-dimensional equilibrium. In two dimensions, you have the sum of the forces in X, the sum of the forces in Y, and the sum of the moments in Z. In three dimensions, we're going to add the sum of the forces in Z, which is not so much of a problem, and the sum of the moments about the X and Y axis as well as about the Z axis. So I now have six equations in three dimensions. Sometimes people have a hard time keeping all of the information completely organized and straight when you have so many different variables and distances. So I'm going to work a problem here using a chart that I hope will help you keep things straightened out. The steps to solving a rigid body equilibrium are the same as they've always been. Read the problem, draw a free body diagram. We're going to actually make a list, a careful list, of each of my forces and the moments, the applied ones and the reaction, reaction moments, in Cartesian form. Now we're going to take the sum of the forces in X, Y, and Z. That's pretty straightforward. When we come to sum the moments, we're going to actually pick a specific point to sum the moments about. And then we're going to add up the, force, the moments in the X, Y, and Z, adding the I components, adding the J components, and adding the K components. Now, bear in mind, when you're doing this, that though the forces create moments, it is not the case that the moments create forces. Once you've got that all straightened out, you have now six equations in six unknowns. You can answer the question. And again, I want to emphasize checking your work. Because if you're giving an answer that doesn't make any sense, you're no use to anybody. So this is the problem we're going to actually work out. Determine the tensions in the cables. Here are my two cables. And the components of the reaction on a smooth collar at A for my 50-pound sign. That's the reading of the problem. This next step is to draw a free body diagram. I will have, the first thing you have to do is decide what you're going to actually draw the free body diagram of. I'm going to include the door and this bar going back to the cable, back, back to the Z axis, but not the cables or the smooth collar itself. So here's my free body diagram. I have a tension in each of the cables. And then I have my reactions at the back, which will include two moments and two forces. I'm not going to have any constraint to rotate this about the z-axis. It's free to do that. And I'm not going to have any reaction force that keeps it from moving up and down that smooth collar. That kind of constraint is provided by the cables. This is my table, or my chart. The first column is a list. List your forces and moments in Cartesian form. You've given them some sort of labels on your free body diagram. Tell me what they are. The, the reason to go ahead and list them out, even if it's a simple list like this, is to make sure you haven't forgotten anything. When you're looking at a free body diagram, you're going to count your arrows. You've got one, two, three, four, five forces in two moments, and you know that you have a complete list. The next column says, where does it act? You have a force, and it acts at a place. Where does it act? In this case, you know that your weight acts at G. The tensions in your two cables act at D and B. Now, what I'm looking for here are the actual Cartesian points. So what is the Cartesian coordinate for the, where these forces act? Now, when you talk about a moment, it's not applicable because a moment is a free vector. And within the object that you're looking at, you can slide those moments to anywhere they'd like. The next column says, in what direction is your force acting, or your moment acting. Here you will have directions for your moments. They, they have known directions. Your forces have known directions. And this is the beginning of understanding what TDE and TBC are in Cartesian form. How do you do this? How do you go from where it acts and what it acts along to a force in Cartesian form? Position vector unit vector, multiply. This is how you're going to run this through. Now, again, it's not applicable for your force column to have a moment in it. So it may have a unit vector, but it's not going to be listed in your force column. This gives you an opportunity to make sure you're never going to mix up this position vector from some sort of position vector that you're going to use to find a moment. Once you have your forces in Cartesian form, we also want to have our moments in Cartesian form. These two are already in Cartesian form, so that's straightforward, bring them over. 
Now, while it is true that the moment does not cause a force, the forces all do create moments. We want to pick a point to sum the moments about so that I can figure out what the moment is at that point due to each of the forces in my list. So each of these three and these two, I want to know what moment they cause at the point I pick. So which point do you want to pick? I'm going to make a suggestion that you're always welcome to use the origin. Now why would I want to use that one? The moment is R cross F for any given force, where R is not the position vector we use to find F. R goes from the point I picked to the point of application of the force. So if I go from the origin to the point of application of the force, this is what I'm going to end up with, this column. The position vector from the origin to the point of application of the force is the same as the Cartesian point at which the force acts. So my moment in Cartesian form I can find by taking the cross product of where the force acts and the force itself in Cartesian form. So the moment at the origin due to W is the cross product of 0.5i plus 2j minus k and minus 50k. Once you have these, this is the moment of each force taken about the origin, then you're all ready to go. My moments in Cartesian form I can calculate to be these i's, j's, and k's. Once you have your forces and your moments in, in Cartesian form, summing the forces in x just says which ones of these have i's. Summing the forces in y says, okay, where are the j's? Write them down. Where are the k's? These are the sum of the forces in Z. And it's the same thing for the moments. Some of the moments in X, some of the moments in Y, and the sum of the moments in Z. What you end up with here is six equations in six unknowns. And you can plug that into any kind of solution solver you'd like or your calculator or whatever makes you happy to solve.